Hi, this is Richard Byrne. In this video, we're going to take a look at all the ways you can add images to your Google Slides. I was asked about this in an email on Friday, and so I thought I'd cover all the ways you can do it. So let's get started with one of the more obvious ways, which is to go to the Insert menu and select Image. And now we have in front of us six different ways to add an image to our slides. We can go and upload an image. And that image is now added to my slide. Once it's here, I can reposition it. I can change its size by clicking and dragging. I can also apply some border shapes to it. If I want to round it out and put a border on it that's a nice orange color, I can do so. I can also, from here, crop the image to make it a little smaller. Now I have my new image cropped with a border around it. I can delete that and start again. So we'll go to the insert menu, select image again, and we can take a snapshot. I'll turn on my webcam. That image is now added to my slide, where again, I'll be able to reposition it and crop it as I want to. We'll use the insert menu again, select image, and select by URL. Now, by URL will allow you to link to an image that you have hosted in a web album somewhere or on your blog. You can also link to images that you find on the web. However, I don't recommend using hot linking, and I have an explanation of hot linking that's added to the notes for this video if you look at it on YouTube, uh, and I'll explain why you don't want to hot link to images that you don't own yourself. But Let's say I have an image that I own myself. Uh, I upload a bunch to Free Tech for Teachers every single day. I'm just going to right click, copy the image address, and paste that link and have the image appear on the screen. We'll insert an image from one of my albums. The nice thing about this is that uh, Every image that I have added to my Google account in some way in the past is available to me through the Your Albums option. So I can go and look at photos from my phone, photos from my posts, photos from other albums that I've made, and of course from Blogger where I've been blogging for years. You can also go to Google Drive and select any image that I've added to my Google Drive account. And the last option here from this menu is to do a search for an image that's labeled for reuse. Let's say I want a picture of a puppy. And we can scroll through and find all kinds of puppy pictures. Let's say I, I like this one. I'm going to click on it once and see the link appear down at the bottom here. Let's open that in a new tab and confirm that it actually is labeled with a Creative Commons license or is in the public, public domain. In this case, it's a Creative Commons licensed image. So I want to make sure that I get all the attribution information that I need and then insert it into the image. Insert the image into the slide. And the attribution information I'll either put down at the bottom of the slide or in the speaker notes. Now there are other ways to add images to our slides. One that gets overlooked quite a bit is the option to just drag and drop from my desktop. So I can just drag and drop onto the slide. That image is now there. That drag and drop will work in Chrome as well as in the latest version of Firefox. Let's delete that image. Now we can also add images by just clicking this little image icon and it'll take us back to that same insert image menu that we would get from the insert drop down. And last but not least, 
we can change the background and insert an image into the background of the slide itself. We'll select change background. Now we'll choose an image. Let's upload this image here. And done. And in this case, that image is now full screen as the background for the slide. I can still add images on top of that. So I want to layer an image on top of this. I might click and drag and put that image on top of the background image. Like so. So those are the ways that you can add images to your Google Slides. As always, for more tips and tricks like this, please check out freetechforteachers.com and practicaledtech.com.